Let me get this out the way right now. Today's topic is gonna be a little hard for people. It's gonna be a little hard for people. So if you got a weak stomach, you got a weak heart, you got weak knees, this probably ain't the video for you. So we talking about ride share right now. But we talking about ride share involved to the full capacity of what we know it to be. The American government, corporations, American citizens in America, and immigrants in America. And that's what the topic of this video is about. Immigrants in America. Now, before people be like, Jeff, man, you racist, man. You're, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm black. I grew up black. I done lived in white neighborhoods. I lived in black neighborhoods. Now I lived in a mainly Latino neighborhood right now. So if I was racist, I wouldn't put myself in, in a Latino neighborhood. I'd go live in a black neighborhood. I'd go live in a white neighborhood. I'd figure something out other than living in a Latino neighborhood. But I don't have a problem with people. I have a problem with people who are racist. Now look up the word racism. Racism is a belief. It's a belief that you think there's one race out there better or worse than another race. That's what you think. And, it, and it's based on like a person. Like you look at me and you see me black, but you don't look at the quality of who I am as a person. You don't look at the quality of me. You say he black. I'm probably better than him because I'm not black. Or whatever race you may be. I'm not black. I'm probably better than him because I'm not black. And he black. Or you see a Chinese person, I'm probably better than that person, or I'm worse off than that person, just because they're Chinese. You don't know nothing about them. That's what racism is. It, it's indoctrinated in your brain that because somebody is born of a certain race, they're either better or worse than you. And it's that belief stuck in your head. Like me, I don't think anybody's better than me, but I don't think anybody's worse than me either. I think everybody has an equal opportunity to be who you are when you wake up. You wake up, you want pancakes? Go eat fucking pancakes. You want to eat ice cream for breakfast? Go eat ice cream for breakfast. I don't care what you do. It's, it's your day. It's your opportunity. Go out and do what you do. So me being racist because of my viewpoints on what I'm about to tell you in this video, check yourself on that shit. Check yourself on it. Because I said, if you got a weak heart, you got a weak stomach, you got weak knees, this might not be the video for you. Now let's start about this country right here, America. See that flag behind me? You see that back there? That, that's the American flag. A lot, a lot of people know about it. Now that stands for freedom. It stands for opportunity, independence. But we have a government right now who's repeating history. And I'm gonna tell you how governments repeat history. The first thing they do is they tear down statues. We're gonna get to ride share in a minute, but let me give you this lesson real quick. If you are an immigrant and you watching this, please, this is what you didn't hear in school. This is what you didn't hear when you was getting naturalized to be a citizen in this country. They're tearing down statues for a reason. When you tear down knowledge and you hide knowledge, you're trying to keep that whole base of knowledge. We're going to take down all these statues so they don't know what happened in this country. We don't want them to know what happened in this country. No, leave those statues up. Don't tear them down. Let it be a reminder, a reminder of oppression. Because even today in 2023, all races are oppressed. You telling me we're not all oppressed as a people? The government wants you to think that only black people are oppressed or only white people are oppressed. No, a government can oppress its people through actions a government can do that like i said this is going to be a real video this is about ride share but i got to give you some history lesson first so you tear down all these statues and you don't let people know what happened in this country especially new people just getting here new people just getting here we ain't gonna tell you what happened in this country we gonna hide it from you so you don't question it we're gonna sweep that shit under the rug and there's a lot of black people like yeah yeah take them statues down yeah yeah fuck them now i'll see you're screwing up because we should let the new people coming over know. The people you looking at, this is what happened to our ancestors in this country. Don't let it happen to you. Don't let it happen to you in 2023. Don't be oppressed. Don't be put down. Don't be put under somebody's control because this is what happens when the government allows an entire race of people to be controlled. We get in the ride chair, stick with me, stick with me, trust me, this is gonna get good. I've thought this shit through, this is gonna get good. So now we have all these new people coming to the country right now. The government's allowing it. Corporate America is paying for it. Corporate America's like, you know what? We're going to keep paying a ton of taxes and we're going to make sure you get all these immigrants over here. Because why was the Civil War fought in this country? Think about it. Why was the Civil War fought? It was fought over human labor. It was fought because over in Britain, when they, they did away with slavery, they abolished slavery over in Britain. They abolished it. Nobody, we don't want any more African slaves. We want to abolish it. They did it. The Queen of England, who still had, you know, a little bit going on over here. They had business still going on over here. The kings and queens of England still had business going. America was like, well, we want to adopt that same thing. Not all Americans, though. Think about it. Not all Americans. Some Americans were like, yeah, we, we think we're going to do away with that. 
Some had a whole lot of land. A whole lot of land. And they were making tons of money on cotton gins, farming, agriculture. They were making a ton of money on these people that they didn't have to pay for. They didn't have to pay a lot for these people. So they was like, you're going to make us give up our lifestyle. You're going to make us give up our economy. Give us our, give up our profits for these people. You're going to make us do that. No, we fighting for that because we keeping people on our land. We keeping people under our control. We keeping people in poverty without freedom. We're going to keep them under our control because that helps us. We getting the ride share. Follow me. We going to keep these people under our thumbs because it gives us power. And now you look in 2023 right now. You look in 2023. We got immigrants coming over. They don't have any power. Government saying, come on over as you wish. Now, when Donald Trump said, we don't want no immigrants over, we want to build a wall, we want to do this and we want to do that. Don't get lost because I said Donald Trump. Don't get lost because there's a point to it. Because Trump, he fucked up too. I disagree with him on some shit when he was talking about some, oh, only Mexico sending us to the rapers and the killers. No, that's not true, dog. There's real family people coming over too. So you can't say Mexico is only sending us rapists. I mean, we got rapists and killers already in America. Look in the prisons we got. There's white people and black people, Chinese people. Everybody's a rapist and a killer. So don't put that shit on Mexico. That's where you fucked up, Trump. I got your back, but that's where you fucked up. So I'm sitting here looking at all these people coming over. And the government's like, yeah, let them come over. Corporate America's like, yeah, let them come over. Cheap labor. Let them come over. We got you. What y'all want a job? Tell you what. You're only making $50 a day in the country you're coming from. You're only making $100 a day in the country you're coming from. Some of y'all only making $200 a week in the country you're coming from. Come over here. We'll, we got jobs for y'all lined up already. Corporate jobs. Gigs. We got gigs. This is where ride share is coming in. We got gigs lined up for you. So they come over. American lifestyle is never promoted to these people. What's promoted to these people is you're going to live better over here than what you lived over there. Of course they are. It's fucking America. Of course they are. The statistics of them living better in America than living over there is very high. The probability is very high. So, of course, it's a given. They're going to live better over here than where they just came from, which is why they're here. So they come over. We're going to pay you $15 an hour. Woo, 15? Damn. I was getting like $1.85 an hour. I was getting $3 an hour. 15 an hour? Shit, I love America. I love America. They give me $15 an hour. Send some money back. I will. Hey, we in ride share now. And you think these motherfuckers with college degrees in America, college degrees in America, making 35, 40, 50 thousand dollars a year at their W-2s. You think these people in America, corporate people looking at all these degrees they selling in colleges are selling all these degrees. And I call it selling a degree because that's what it is. They're selling degrees. They're selling them because you ain't got to go to college to be smart. You're either smart or not. That's just how shit is. But you're getting sold a degree. And you get immigrants coming over here who ain't never stepped foot on this soil. Driving ride share with us, making ninety dollars with us, ninety dollars an hour with us, fifty dollars an hour with us, eighty dollars an hour with us. They got SUVs, they got everything possible. They doing the same thing we doing. You think ride share was set up for that? No, ride share. They like, dude, we wanted cheap labor. You guys are getting too smart, you immigrants. You immigrants are getting too smart now. I mean, we offered you a job, but you got to help our corporate profits. You got to help our corporate profits out. Remember, the slaves. And we always talk about how Roger is like slavery. DoorDash is like slavery. This is like slavery. And in the next breath, you know how many immigrants are in gig work now? Do you know how many immigrants are in gig work now? We just call gig work slavery. Next sentence. You know how many immigrants are in gig work now? What did I tell you? American history. So if you thinking these immigrants are coming over here to be given an American lifestyle, you wrong. They're being sold slavery. Modern day slavery is what they're being sold. They're coming over, being offered a fraction of what we would work for in an American lifestyle. We got enough Americans in this country right now to do gigs. We got homeless vets. We got homeless people on the corner. We got families living with cousins and aunts and uncles. We got enough people over here to do all this work. We got enough people. But corporate don't want to pay them people because them people cost a lot. They're going to need medical insurance. They gonna need life insurance. They gonna need dental insurance, visit insurance. They gonna need a salary. They gonna need a lot because they're an American on American soil. Now you get an immigrant over here on American soil, you ain't gotta worry about all that. This is a profitable little entity right here. They just came across the Rio Grande. 
or maybe they visa expired. They're over here from Ghana. Their visa expired. They're from Ghana. They're from Somalia. Their visas expired. They're from Germany. They're from Sweden. They're from Norway. They from, you know, Russia, Ukraine. They visas expired. They're immigrants. They're over here right now. So how do you keep them over here profitably without making them become an American? Theoretically, you pay them less. You rent them a car. You tell them, hey, do this much work for us and this and that. We're going to kick you down. They're going to send you a ton of shit rides and ride share. They're going to give you a ton of shit deliveries and gig work and delivery. And they're going to tell you this is the American dream. You working for it. You working for it. Meantime, we got corporations making record profits on these people's backs. We got Americans like me being priced out of my job. Being priced out of my job because I want 50 an hour, 60 an hour. I'm an American. I know what it feels like to live in this country on $15 an hour. And I ain't trying to be there. But these people, they don't know what it's like to live in this country on $15 an hour. They just got here. They don't know what that shit feels like. They four, five, six people in a two, three bedroom house. They don't know what this shit feels like to have your own, have a big ass four bedroom house with just you living in it. Five bedroom house with you and your wife and one kid. They don't know how that shit feels because they just got here. And corporate knows they don't know how it feels. So corporate is going to play them like the pawn. Not a knight, not a queen, not a bishop, not a rook. A pawn. And it's going to use them by giving the government, lobbying the government to allow these people to keep coming over here. Because the more they come over and the more we put them inside a ride share and delivery, we going to turn a profit. Did Uber not turn a profit? Is Lyft not becoming more profitable? And what did we say? This shit's like slavery, man. Ride sharing delivery is like slavery. Next sentence. You know how many immigrants are involved in gig work now? What do you think is going on? Are you awake yet? What do you think is going on right now? Think about it. Think about it. What do you really think is going on in this country right now? That's why I had to give you the, the history lesson first. Because when you start erasing history, it's bound to repeat itself. When you start taking down statues, when you stop teaching certain lessons in schools, taking it out replacing it with something that's very off we're gonna take all the american history out of schools all the black history out of schools all these different controversial things out of schools and replace it with a new controversy sexual education identification genderfication we're gonna replace it with that that way you guys ain't focused on what this country was founded on because we're gonna repeat some shit in a minute because when y'all ain't looking we're gonna leave the back door open we're gonna let all the immigrants in and who are we as Americans? How do we fight it back? I'm going to tell you how we fight it back. You grab your brother, your immigrant brother, you grab your immigrant sister, and you say, hey, don't settle for that shit. Don't settle for that shit. We fought a civil war so you can live just like every other American in this country. We fought a civil war for that shit a long time ago. They taking down civil war statues because they don't want you to know about that shit. They taking civil war shit. They taking names off of schools. They taking names off of stadiums. They taking down civil war street names because they don't want you asking shit about the civil war that was fought in this country to give everybody an equal chance. They don't want you to ask about that. They just want you to think and believe you given something. Oh, we gonna give you freedom. We gave you freedom. No, we fought for that shit. We fought for that. You ain't give me shit. People died over that. If you gave somebody something, if you gave somebody freedom, nobody would die because it's free. You just giving it to them. Here you go. Here's some freedom, dog. Take that. You out of here. See you. People died to have the right in this country to work, to earn, to make money, to live like every other person in this country. People died doing that. Whites, blacks, Native Americans, Hispanics that were over here. Anybody who was involved in a civil war. Chinese people probably shit I don't know but anybody that was involved in that shit died fighting so everybody can have it even and now they saying well right now Americans are getting a little too much for us how can we balance out this equation first how many Americans are living check to check right now think about it you can look at the news how many Americans are living check to check then on top of that not only are they living check to check how many are dwindling their savings trying to stay afloat right now americans now i'm talking about americans just americans american citizens dwindling their savings right now trying to stay afloat how many americans are now taking out payday loans and other loans just to stay afloat how many americans are doing that how many americans are getting their cars repossessed how many americans are getting foreclosed on their homes right now but yet we gonna pump a ton of money a ton of economy and to people who have never stepped foot on our soil 
We're going to pump money into their pocket, our tax dollars that we worked, we earned, that we deserve the benefit of. We're giving it to the next person and saying, we're going to give you a better life in America. What about the lives we already have in America? And like I said, this ain't no knock to an immigrant because if somebody told me I had a better chance at a better life across the river, shit, I'm crossing the river. If they told me, hey, you cross the Atlantic Ocean, you, you fly over the Atlantic Ocean. Once you get here, we're going to take care of you, Mr. Norway, Mr. Sweden. Mr. Ukraine, we're going to take care of you when you get over here. So you fly across the Atlantic and we got tax dollars already set up to take care of you. But we don't have those same tax dollars for the Americans here that paid into that system. Because this shit is modern day slavery. It's about getting the cheapest labor you can get on this soil. The cheapest labor you can get on this soil. And don't tell them what you're doing. Make them think you're living just like the Americans are living. And in a sense, they are because Americans are going broke. Americans are living check to check at an all time high. Americans are working two and three jobs. We got Americans working 80 hours a week. We got Americans being foreclosed on. You living just like an American now. Yeah, you right. You right. Because they're diluting the financial system in America. So Americans don't get the benefit of the financial system. Corporate America gets it. The plantation gets the benefit of the systems here because the plantation is bringing in that cheap labor, that low cost labor. That free labor, whatever it takes, get them people in here. Because the people who are here are costing us too much. We got to phase them out. They're costing us too much. And so once we phase them out and we got the new people in here in ride share, ride share becomes turning a profit. All of a sudden, ride share is turning profit. Uber's turning record profits. Lyft's turning record profits. Most of the people in New York City that are drivers, I would say many of them. Now, I won't even say most. I'll say many because most means at least 51 percent or higher. And I don't know that percent. I'll say many or immigrants because a lot of immigrants live in New York. And where did all that theft happen in New York? Why? Because a lot of people in New York don't know our system, don't know our laws, don't know how evil and greedy the corporate nation, we have, the corporate entities we have in this nation are. They don't know. They just happy to be over here, happy to be working, happy to be making 15 an hour, happy to be making 20 an hour because they was making that shit every two, three days where they from. So they're like, man, I'm getting $15 an hour. Shit, it was taking me a whole day to make $15 where I'm from. And move. I was struggling over there. This shit's like heaven. But in America, it costs way more than 50. This is a whole nother country it costs way more than $15 an hour to live here. So if you want to be here, you got to live like an American over here. Because if I went to, to Malaysia or I went to the Philippines, I wouldn't go over there and try to live like an American. I wouldn't go over there and try to rent no house for $2,000 a month just because I'm American. I will pay $2,000 a month in America because that's the cost of living in America. But if I go to the Philippines, I'm only paying $200 a month, $300 a month. Because I'm going to act like I'm in the Philippines when I'm in the Philippines. I'm going to pay Philippine prices. I'm going to get Philippine salary, Philippine money, eat Philippine food. I'm doing all that shit. I'm not American when I'm over there. I'm on Philippine soil. I'm going to do Philippine shit. So when you're on American soil, you got to do American shit. You can't come over here acting like you from Venezuela. You can't come over here acting like you from the Caracas and, and goddamn, you know, Zimbabwe and shit like that. You got to come over here and be like, you know what? I'm on American soil. It's time to eat some hamburgers, motherfucker. It's time to act like I'm American. You need that salary. You need that hourly wage because it's going to cost you that. Because if you don't get it like that, History repeats. I told you in the beginning, history will repeat itself. Because we fought a civil war, so this shit wouldn't happen. So people would not be taken advantage of by corporate plantations. So people wouldn't be taken advantage of by governments. Because all that shit was legal back then. Slavery was legal back then. And if we're saying ride share right now is like modern day slavery, we're saying slavery is legal again because the government ain't stepping up. Corporations ain't stepping in saying, hey, you know, we working these people to death for nothing. Shit, we working in the death. For no and they losing their cars, losing their houses, getting evicted, losing child custody because they can't afford shit, losing court cases because they can't pay child support. Damn, this is modern day slavery we putting these people through. They don't give a shit about people. I've told y'all that before. They don't give a fuck about you. Because if they did, they'd be checking themselves on the shit they doing. So when I think about immigrants being involved in ride share, I think about how this country was founded. And I think a new people coming to this soil right now who have no idea how this country was founded. They have no idea what just happened over the past few years, taking down statues, removing names off of schools, names off of streets. Because when they erase the history, you can repeat that shit because you ain't going to ask no questions. Hey, who's James Madison? Hey, who's George Washington? Hey, who's they done erased all that shit? You ain't got to ask them questions. But if I go 
to Hawaii. I'm going to, hey, who's King Kamehameha? I'm going to ask your motherfucking ass, who the fuck's King Kamehameha? But if King Kamehameha statue wasn't there, I wouldn't ask you that because the statue wouldn't be there. You start taking out the fucking, the, the native shit that was there. You start taking out the history that was there. Ain't nobody going to ask no questions about it. If ain't nobody asking you no questions about it, you ain't got no questions about it. You don't even know that shit existed. Slavery existed in this country. A lot of YouTube channels are saying, this shit's like modern day slavery, the way they working us on these apps, man. Damn. And the more we try to do better with these apps, the more we try to make more money, what happens? The apps don't want to pay us. They find ways to take away looks, find ways to take away money, find ways to steal our tips, reclass our money, take away streaks and bonuses. And we the ones out here in the streets making all this money. And the first thing they're thinking about is, fuck these American drivers. How can we get cheaper labor in here? They don't outsource customer support to AI and to India. So you either talking to Habib, Sunil, Sunil, you know, Parid, you talking to somebody, you ain't talking to Timmy and Tommy because they need cheaper labor to turn profits. I keep it 100 with you motherfuckers. I done told y'all already. I keep it 100. If you got a weak heart, weak knees, a weak stomach, this probably ain't the video for you. I'm only going to keep it 100. And you motherfuckers know when y'all hit up chat support, exactly what you're going to see. If I'm lying to you, tell me, Jeff, you lying. Because I talked to James yesterday in support. And that motherfucker called me and me and him chatted and he's from fucking Ohio. You motherfuckers know I'm not lying. I ain't got no reason to lie to y'all. And when you start seeing the game unfold, you got to call that shit out for what it is. Call it for what it is. And if you lived in this country, then you know this country was based on human labor coming over, conquering this land, trading this land, cultivating this land, selling this land. A bunch of people involved in making this land into a home. And once this land became a home, what happened? We need to take care of this land. And I ain't got money to take care of this land. So what did they do? We can get cheap labor. We can get cheap labor. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the first people over here, the first people over here were not slaves. The first people over here were explorers, adventurers. They had a few slaves with them, yeah, because they needed labor to move stuff, to carry stuff, to row boats and shit like that, yeah. But they didn't just say, hey, the first people we want on this land is a bunch of slaves. Because imagine showing up with 10 white people, but like 70,000 slaves. Them 10 white people ain't going to make it that far. They not. They not going to make it that far. You got 20, 30,000 slaves, but you got 10 white people saying, hey, we want, no. When motherfucker showed up, it was probably about, you know, 40, 50 slaves and about three, 400 men, few women probably. They had it under control. And now what do we got? We got major corporations right now, major corporations. We got a huge government right now who's trying to control everything you do because they're reminding themselves how do we get this country started? How can we reset everything? Well, first, we got to break the American citizen. We got to break these motherfuckers financially, morally, medically. We got to break these motherfuckers health wise, strokes and collapsing and shit. We got to break these motherfuckers. And once we break them, that's when we introduce phase two of the plan. We get new blood into the system. And when we get that new blood into the system, make sure it's not rich people we have allowing to immigrate. We're not allowing, you know, people who in their countries, you know, doctors and scientists, and we're not letting them immigrate in droves. We're not bringing them over in droves because if they came over, they're too expensive. You get doctors and scientists and engineers and mechanics and school. You get all these people from overseas that are that are very affluent. They're going to come to America. They're not going to help the financial situation because they're going to know they worth. They're going to know they worth. You want people who you think are destitute, desperate, will do any fucking thing for a chance. And you don't pay them shit and you make profits on their back. That's immigrants and ride share. And it's up to us to help these motherfuckers out because that's what the war is. The war is not us solely against the apps. We also got to fight the theology of what these apps are doing to these new people coming to our country. We got to fight that theology. We got to tell them this is what America is about. Stop taking these shit rides. Stop taking these shit orders. You don't need to be taking 95 cent base fares, $2 base fare rides and shit. No, hold out. Be an American. You worth more than that. Come over here and get the life we got. That's the only way we're going to change this shit. Because if you come over here and you water down the system, you fucking it up for real Americans over here. Because I'm not taking no shit ride. I'm not taking no, you know, 50 cent a mile ride. You out here taking 30 cent a mile. Corporations is like, we love that motherfucker. Keep sending them to him. We making high profits off of his ass. Fucking Jose. Ricardo. Micaela. Fucking all these motherfuckers. Making all his money on them. And Jeff, what does Jeff get? Jeff gets throttled. Jeff don't get shit. 
Because Jeff's an American. He knows his worth. Jeff costing us too much. Keep sending that shit over to fucking Ricardo. Send that shit over to fucking Pilaf from fucking Germany. Send it to somebody, but don't send it to Jeff. Jeff's costing us too much. And if that ain't bad enough, now they're introducing all these Waymos in here. The Waymos are dedicated for short rides because we love short rides. Why are short rides dry, drying, up, uh, drying up right now? Short rides are drying up because Waymos are taking all the short rides in the downtown areas. They're taking all the, the little quick hops here and there. They, they trying to send those to the Waymos. They telling people, oh, there ain't no driver in the area. Ain't no driver in the area. But we got a Waymo right around the corner from you. Oh, I guess so. I'll use the Waymo then. I guess so. That's how they doing this shit. And where the, my phone is blowing up with nature hikes. I ain't never seen so many net because Waymos can't go on the highway. So what are they doing with nature hikes? I get nature hikes all day. I get nature hikes north. I get nature hikes to the west, to the east, always down the highway. Because Waymos are taking all the short rides. I'm getting eight, nine nature hikes sent to me in a row. Not a single, you know, short ride until they just get tired of that shit and say, okay, give them a short ride. Fuck it, give them a short ride. And that's why it's so slow. Corporate America has a game plan right now. And the game plan is to squash the American citizen. That's the game plan. Corporate America's been on this shit for years now. Been on it for years. And it's up to us to fight back. We got to fight back. And we got to start with the immigrants. Educate them. Don't hate them. Educate them. They came over here for a good life. Let's give it to them. But they got to want that shit. Like I said, I live in a Latino neighborhood. These motherfuckers got nicer cars than me. They got nicer properties than me. They own HVAC companies and shit. They own whole motherfucking food stands and food trucks and shit. They over here getting this money. They know what they worth. They ain't playing no fucking games over here. These motherfuckers, I'm the only rideshare driver probably in my whole neighborhood. I'm the broke motherfucker here and I'm the American. I'm the broke motherfucker. The rest of them balling. So they came over here and they got it right. They got it right. It is up for us to educate the new ones over here. Get it right. Don't allow yourself to be slaved out with these apps because even every channel out there is saying this shit is like slavery. Immigrants coming in. The new slaves. And all of us are sitting here like we're being kicked off the fucking plantation. Slowly but surely being kicked off the plantation. But they're going to still fuck with us. They're still going to sell us some loans. They're going to sell us an education if we want to be smarter and work in corporate. Just go to school. Take out a, you know, a $60,000 loan and go to college. No, because I got to pay that shit back. I just want $60,000 to earn. Can I earn that? Eh, no, we're going to get that shit to fucking Mikaela. Pilaf. You don't need it. Ricardo, he needs it. In the meantime, what does our American family do? Now I got to move in with a cousin. Move in with an aunt. Move in with a friend. Get two or three fucking roommates. And we've been living in this country for how fucking long and we ain't got this shit right yet? It ain't that we ain't got it right. We're being held down, controlled, thumbs on top of us. And that's why I wanted to make this video, you know, just to trigger some shit in your head. And I told y'all, this, this was going to be a real video. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about it, and I'm cool. I welcome all opinions. If you're an immigrant, and reply, comment, shit, I don't care. Tell us how you feel about the shit. And if, you, if you're an American, tell us how you feel about the shit. But I, I will warn you as an American, don't put this shit on no immigrant. Don't do that. Because they just got to this country. They don't know the game in corporate America yet. They don't know American corporations yet. Many of them don't know how our government works. Many of them don't even know how the history of this company got, country got started. They don't even know it. Because statues were taken away. Shit ain't being taught to them. We got taught all this shit in school coming up. If somebody went to school in Mexico and Venezuela and fucking Germany and goddamn Norway, they don't know shit about America. They don't know shit about this country. All they know that it used to be slavery here and black people were the slaves. Half of them probably don't even know Irish people were indentured servers, which are slaves. They were over here too. So they had a bunch of white people over here doing the same shit the black people were doing, if not worse. The only difference is white people can work them ways out of, they can work, you know, 15 years and, and become, no longer become an indentured servant. They can work 15 years to get out. But when you was black, you was a slave for life. But still, even as an indentured servant, you got your shit handed to you. Trust me. It wasn't easy for you. It wasn't easy. But a lot of people in other countries don't know that. So when we welcome them to this country and we try to have them help us in ride share, help us do the do the payloads in here, help us get the rides out the way, the delivery out the way, make sure they ain't selling themselves short. Talk to them. Be cool with them. And if you're an immigrant, be cool with talking to an American. Be cool with getting the system down. Don't be no sucker for America, because I'm going to tell you right now, just like they played the slaves out when they said, we're going to give you freedom, which we weren't given, we fought for it. Are black communities any better now 
than they were a decade ago, two decades ago, three decades ago. Look at the black schools in this country. Look at the black families in this country. Look at just black children in general in this country. If freedom for black people was supposed to make us better off, why are we still in the same fucking predicaments we in now? Because they're going to do the same shit to immigrants. They're going to get you here, stick you in the neighborhood, call it the projects, call it the ghetto, call it the hood, call it whatever the fuck you want to call it. They're going to make sure you stay together because you ain't nothing but an ant in the ant hill. You are a cog in the wheel. You just working on the machine is all you doing. You work on that corporate machine. And once you do that, and you get to the point where you realize you ain't going nowhere. It's going to be too late. Ask black families. How many generations your family lived in this hood? How many generations it's taken y'all to get out of this hood? How come your, your family ain't got a business yet? Like I said, I live in a Latino community. There's a lot of motherfucking Latinos here own businesses already. We've been here for how long and we ain't owning businesses yet? These motherfuckers own corner stores, corner cellarias, motherfucking Latiendas, all kind of shit. Fucking zapatos, they got shoe stores and shit. Fucking pantalones, motherfucking camisetas, they got every fucking thing out here. And what do we got? Nothing. Motherfucking weave shop, that's about it. Barber shop, that's about it. We should have been further ahead, been further ahead. We fought for these freedoms. We fought for better. We fought, we paid taxes in this country already to educate our children. We paid taxes hoping they would do right by us. But when you get corporate America, Involved with government. What's going on right now is the kind of shit you see. Inflation. Everybody going downhill, but corporate America's getting richer. All these people at the top, these CEOs, all these motherfuckers getting richer. How are you getting richer when the country itself is getting worse off? These motherfuckers betting against us. Like you say, a lot of channels out there, man. Gig workers like slavery, man. They slave drivers. They slave. This is modern day slavery. How many people are saying, there's a lot of goddamn immigrants in, in gig work right now? You answering your own motherfucking question, don't even realize it. 